I went to Nepal to see the situation of women and girls there. A lot of people in Nepal are lied to, and they're in danger. Many are teenage girls. Nepal is one of Asia's poorest countries. It's on the northeast border with India. It's a place where human traffickers operate. They find vulnerable people and buy and sell them. A lot of the girls live in small villages. They feed the families goats and wash the floor and wish there was enough electricity to watch TV. If they have money for school fees and their families agree, they go to school. But a lot of girls drop out. If their mothers beat them, or their fathers have died of AIDS or alcoholism, or if there's just no one taking care of them, and a friendly, well-dressed stranger approaches them, they listen. Lakshmi is 16 and an orphan. She and her sister help take care of their younger siblings. She told me, I don't have any dreams. Lakshmi is the kind of girl traffickers look for. They offer a good paying job as a maid in nearby India, and the girl thinks maybe she and her family will have a better future. The thing about traffickers is that they're good psychologists. They find your weak spot. They find out that you need money for medical care for a relative, or to pay back a loan that's been hanging over your family's head, or that you want to keep your little brother in school. In Nepali villages, traffickers may offer jobs, or they may say they're going to marry a girl after they go to India. If you're Nepali, the border with India is open. You don't need a visa, and you're rarely stopped. Traffickers bring a girl across the border on a bus, a rickshaw, a bicycle. If the trafficker is a man, sometimes he puts a dot on the girl's forehead so it looks like the two of them are married. That way, they cross the border with no questions asked. Once the girl is in a strange place where she doesn't know the language or people or how to call for help, she may be sold. Sold to a brothel as an unpaid prostitute, or sold to a private family as an unpaid maid. When traffickers lie to people, they don't just steal their money, they steal their lives. Lots of girls go missing. Caritas pays school fees so girls like Lakshmi can stay in school. She doesn't have to choose between spending money on school and spending money on food. Caritas runs radio shows to warn people in rural areas about dangerous job offers. And Caritas runs awareness raising courses in at-risk places like refugee camps or border villages. Nagchung is 14. She dropped out of school and didn't have much to do. Her mother, an alcoholic, beat her and her sister. When Nagchung was offered a job as a housemaid abroad, she said yes, but was afraid to tell her father. When she got ID papers for the trip, she got worried. She told me she didn't understand why the ID papers were made out using a fake name. A neighbor woman named Mina heard about her plans. Mina had taken a Caritas course about trafficking. She talked to Nag Chung and said, this job probably isn't what you think. So Nag Chung didn't take the job. She's staying with a better family now. It's one less life stolen. Caritas keeps going where the traffickers go, learning their lies, and trying to get one step ahead of them. Everyone deserves their own life. Everyone owns their own life. It can't be sold.